Staying with this week's theme of keeping things simple, I could think of no better Scout class figure to review today than Hubcap, who is from a movie line, technically. I, I tend to think of it as Revenge of the Fallen because that was the most recent movie line, but it's actually Transformers 2010, uh, the ones that came in the weird like yellow packaging that eventually became Reveal the Shield, where it was all Generations toys, but we pretended like it was a movie line or something like that. Uh, yeah, so Hubcap kind of falls into that weird, like, in-between toy line. I don't know. It was a weird marketing thing. But, hey, it gave us some interesting toys, and this was one of them. At least it was for me. Uh, as you can see, he is a very old-style roadster. Not something you typically see in Transformers ever. Like, they're always, you know, much more modern sports cars. Much more... Uh, I don't know, yeah, just much more modern. Like, I, I can't really say it any better than that. This thing is old. This is like 30s-style hot rod. It's a very, it's an interesting look. It's definitely different. You know, it instantly gives you the, the vibe that it's something of an older Autobot. Now, Hubcap doesn't have much fiction attached to him outside of a few appearances in the comics. The comics are rarely canonical in the first place, so I can't really, uh, I, I can't really confirm or deny if he is an older character, but he kind of gives you that impression. He's molded completely in this, like, really interesting, like, red-orange plastic. It's a hue I don't normally see on a Transformer toy. Definitely makes him stand out, you know, as, you know, especially as a vehicle from a bygone era. And now, just because he is a scout class and he is simple does not mean he does not have some interesting features. I love the exhaust sticking out of the front engine going all the way to the side. I love the attention to paint them all the way through. That's something that you'd probably see skipped out a lot on these days. You can see in the front, the grill, the headlights, and the bumper are all painted up in the same silver. I would have preferred the, the headlights themselves be a different color, but eh, it still works. You can also see the silver is on the rims, giving it kind of a white wall look, but no, uh, well, no, I'm lying, because that, that's actually that is actually the, the hub, so... And then to the back, the tail lights are also done up in silver along with the bumper. And you also see black paint done up for the windshields all the way around. This is another thing that gets skipped on these days. The back windshield actually is painted here. Good job, boys. One of the other things that was a little bit strange, whoa, aside from my review stage needing to be pinned down better, the Autobot symbol is actually a standard Autobot symbol, not the movie one. Now, when we get into robot mode, you can definitely tell this was intended to be a movie character. It's just weird, because every now and then they'd release something where they kind of forgot to pay attention to what tampographs they were applying. Every now and then, something would slip by, and this was one of them. Uh, other than that, his details are pretty simple. You can see outlines for the gas cap, the uh, rear trunk, the handle, and the door handles. Little bits for the windows, or uh, the... the uh, rev ah. The, the rear view mirrors. Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to recount everything, and I'm I'm slipping up, man. I've not been sleeping well lately, but I like the figure. I, I like it. It's a very unique look. Uh, it's very it's a vehicle we almost never get in Transformers anymore. So with that, we'll go ahead and transform into robot mode, and this is where the figure is special to me, but probably not special to a lot of others because. As movie toys go, he is very simple. Like we've already we're already done with the legs. All I have to do is pull them out and do that. So let's get the arms down. Hold the chest out like so. And go ahead and split the legs. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> like for all I complain about Revenge of the Fallen's uh, over complexity. This need to engineer things as involved as possible. Hubcap, coming directly after that line, manages to transform extremely smoothly and extremely well. Like, he, he has a quick little conversion. And still, a very complete one. Like, you can, you can see, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of the vehicle mode is now gone. It's all in backpack and well not even backpack but shell that's hanging off the back of his legs but you still get a classic appearance of that front of the car forming the chest 
as you can see here in the robot mode, we have a lot of new plastic and a lot of new details revealed since movie toys tend to hide their robots inside parts of shell attached to the attached to them. And hubcap is no different. Let's take a look at the head. I guess the head is also where I get a little bit more of the old timey vibe to him where he might be an older character. Something about that no, no, kind of slightly brown, gray plastic that makes up his head. Just gives it a really old look. His eyes look a little bit tired, which is probably how mine look right now. But you can see, you can see, he he definitely has a little bit of character to him. Yeah, kind of have to use your imagination, but I think it's there well enough. So you, as you can see, a lot of gray plastic has been added, as well as this slightly gray slightly brown gray plastic that's being used for the arms and the legs he is very full of movie aesthetic here you can see a lot of little intricate parts a lot of little panels going into forming his arms and such and it's more evident down in the legs where the details are far more complex and you can you can see you can see a lot again a lot of sharp lines a lot of panels a lot of movie aesthetic is worked in here Though strangely enough, he has Gundam feet. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> it's like the only part of his robot mode that's actually orange, which is weird. But beyond that, as you can see, um, he forms pretty well. Like, okay, it's, like he wears the kibble well, so I'm not really complaining about that. The proportions work out pretty well. You know, he's very solid as far as Scout class toys go. If we want to go into articulation a little bit here, the head is ball jointed, though does have this panel behind it, which might hinder a few things you might want to do with the head. The shoulders are universal. They rotate at the shoulder line, but they also hinge outward. So it's just it's just right to give you a good range. Ball jointed elbow, which gives you the rotation as well as a 90 degree bend. See, no waist articulation. Universal hips, which is kind of surprising on such a small figure. And you can actually feel like very subtle detents in it as well. You also have a 90 degree knee bend as well as a thigh rotation and a little bit of pivot back and forth in the ankle. Now the knees are going to get a little bit restricted. You feel like if the shell wasn't there, the knees could go a lot farther, but they work for what they are. For a simple little figure, it's a good level, level of articulation. And I think the simplicity of the transformation is what allows that nice level of articulation to come through. Like the engineering was saved for making the robot a little bit more special and a little bit more workable. But as far as that goes, that's pretty much it. That's really all I can talk about. He is a scout class figure from an age where scout class figures had no gimmicks of any kind. He doesn't have any accessories. He is what he is. He is Hubcap, and he is to be cherished for the uniqueness that is Hubcap. He has a unique vehicle mode. He has a unique coloring to him. And, I don't know, he still forms some of the classic tropes of Transformers, even though he is a movie toy. And among a movie line where everyone seems overcomplicated, Hubcap keeps it simple. He's a very quick transformation but not an unsatisfying one. You know, it is not a it is not a spring out, flip out, change. He feels like he does what a lot of classic Transformers do to transform. So in that, I don't knock him for a simple transformation. I kind of applaud it, because he does it very, very well. And it's... For a movie toy that represents such an old vehicle, he does have a lot of classic elements to him. So yeah... He might be a little bit simple, he might not do a whole lot, but to me, he's one of the better examples of his time and size. 